Allah the Exalted says in the Quran, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Do people think that once they say we believe, they will be left untested? For indeed, we have tested those before them. Allah, the exalted, the almighty, decreed for this worldly life to be a place of test. A place of affliction. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite this fact, gave us good news that this test is not something that is perpetual. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, who said this, also said, سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ عُسْرٍ يُسْرًا Indeed, Allah will bring after difficulty, ease. Amongst the tests, is that which the Ummah is suffering from now. The state of weakness, the upper hand of the people of falsehood over the believers. But again, this will also not be perpetual. It will come to an end. So, do not lose hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. It will come to an end. So don't lose hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. From this stance, I address those who are afflicted everywhere. As well as addressing those sincere believers who weep to the state of the Ummah, whose hearts split to the suffering of the believing men and women everywhere, I say, please be mindful and remember the following. Number one, everything is predestined and decreed before it happened. Allah Azza wa Jal says, ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها. No calamity, no disaster, no hardship occurs on earth or in yourselves except that it is it was written in a record before it came to be the prophet sallallahu said and this is reported by muslim allah azza wa jal recorded all decrees 50000 years before he created anything so everything is predestined, everything is decreed. And when the Prophet ﷺ was teaching Abdullah ibn Abbas, and this is reported by Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al Albani, he said to him, Wa'alam Annama Asabaka Lam Yakun Liyuhtiak. No, that whatever befalls you can never escape you. If it's meant, if it's decreed to befall you, it will never miss you. The second thing I would like to remind them and myself with is perseverance, patience, 
because the reward of perseverance is limitless, is endless, is without measure. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Innama yuwaffa sabirun ajrahum bi ghayr hisab." Those who persevere will receive their reward without limit, without measure. Allah did not set a certain limit to the reward they would receive. And in the book of Imam Ahmad, and it's classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet ﷺ gave a similitude to those who persevere through times of hardship and difficulty. He said to the companions, Ahead of you are days, meaning difficult days. The similitude of perseverance during them is like that of holding on to a live charcoal. Allahu Akbar. This is difficult. This is tough. Then he said, to encourage, to instruct, to guide. He said, the reward of the person who practices, who holds on, who perseveres and holds on, is like that of 50 people like you. They said, 50 from us or from them? He said, no. 50 from people like you, 50 companions to hold on during this time, we are rewarded or promised to be rewarded 50 multiples of that of the companions radiallahu anhum. So the second message here is persevere through these difficulties and await the reward of your perseverance. The third point. <clears throat> is a call to be amongst those whom the Prophet wasallam described as strangers. You know, when things get tough, when matters become tight, those holding on to their faith become very few. And they appear amongst their communities as aliens, strange people and that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and this is reported by ahmed classified as authentic by al albani he said tuba lil ghuraba tuba is for those who will be strangers tuba is either glad tidings for with jannah or a tree in Jannah. And in both cases, it's good news that they will be either admitted or receive something in Jannah. Who are these strangers? He sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent, and there are two different narrations. He said, those who reform themselves when people get corrupted. You see, under pressure, people will either give up their faith altogether or soften their stance with regards to their commitment. They want to be perceived as moderate, right? To please this or that side. He said, those who reform themselves when people get corrupted and the second narrations, he said, those who reform others when they get corrupted. 
Ibn Hajar said, Indeed, the second type, those who work on others are better. Why? Because in order for you to work on someone, to improve someone, you must have had this done to yourself first. You must have improved yourself first. You must have reformed yourself first before you took initiative to work on someone else. So, the message here is, life is short, be strange. Be strange in the sense, don't go with the stream. Hold on. Life is short. Hardships will depart. Agonies will depart. Suffering will depart. Persecution will depart. Everything will come to an end. The blessings of Allah, the relief of Allah, the support of Allah, the help of Allah will come. So think positive of your Lord. Let's think good of Allah Azza wa Jal. Expect the best from Allah Azza wa Jal. And persevere, and it will happen. One of the amazing things is that Allah Azza wa Jal sometimes brings relief from the source of difficulty, from the source of hardship. From the source of oppression. In the story of <coughs> Musa and Fir'aun, Musa was placed in the river by his mother after Allah inspired her to do so. And then, who picked him up? فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُوًا وَحَزَنًا So the people of Fir'aun, the family of Fir'aun, picked him up from the river so that he would become an enemy to them and a source of sorrow and sadness. So they picked him up. They raised him. They cultivated him. They took care of him. In the house of Fir'aun. The wife of Fir'aun said, She was addressing Fir'aun. He said, This boy is a source of joy for me and, and, and you. Don't kill him. Perhaps he would be of benefit to us, or we adopt him as a son, and they did not know the outcome. They did not perceive the outcome, meaning of what they're doing. Allah Azza wa Jal decreed that he alayhi salatu wasalam refrained from suckling, so his mother was brought to suckle him again. So her heart was put to ease. He was taken care of by Fir'aun who was killing every newborn. His own wife said, don't kill him. So he refrained. He raised him. He was raised in the, in the house of Fir'aun himself, who was the source of tyranny and oppression and killing and persecution. Allah took care of him and made relief for him and for his mother from the source of difficulty. So let's not grieve over what's going on. Yes, we're humans. We are saddened when we see what we see happening to our brothers and sisters. But let's think positive, think good of Allah Azza wa Jal. And let us fulfill being strangers. And being stranger entails holding on to that life cold with the hope of the reward for those who persevere from Allah, which has no measure and limit. And then after that, leave the rest to Allah Azza wa Jal, because it is His decrees and we are His creation. And He does what He wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
All we have to do is stay firm on faith. Practice, commit, hold on, think good, be positive, be optimistic. Things will change. When? That's with Allah, not with me and you. That's for Him to decide, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma arfa'il ba'sa'a alayhi wa sallam.